News Talk 97.1 DGS. Paranormal Tuesday. Josh Corey returns. You'll remember Josh from the Flat Earth segment a couple of weeks ago. And when Josh was here, he mentioned that Flat Earth is just one of my many passions and uh, all sorts of conspiracy theories that he's into and knowledgeable about. And we liked him enough, and he was he was really good. And we said, well, let's just make him our conspiracy guy. So Josh is going to be on about once a month uh, with us. Good to see you again. How are you? Hi, Dave. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, is it, if I were to call you a conspiracy theorist, first, is it accurate? Second, is it offensive in any way? Uh, for me personally, it's not offensive at all. Um, anybody mentions the words conspiracy theorist, everybody gets that picture in their yep. mind that pops up of the yep. guy in the basement wearing a tinfoil yes. hat. And really, that's <laughs> it, only from the mouth of a true conspiracy theorist can we say that it's all a government conspiracy to make people think that. Mm. Well, actually, I can... I rectify that statement. It's actually a government fact. It's been declassified through the uh, Project Mockingbird back in the 70s that right after Kennedy's assassination, the CIA, in an attempt to legitimize the Warren Commission report, was trying to demonize anybody that thought that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald acted with anybody other than himself. Mm -hmm. He wasn't just a lone nut. Anybody that thought that he acted in coercion with someone else was a conspiracy theorist and thereby a complete lunatic. And they've just been pushing that in the media and in the papers, and it's always been twisted and turned, so it always had that bent, that slant. So the conspiracy theorist was always crazy and never really had all the facts and was just paranoid and delusional. I know in my personal life, I know a lot of high-ranking federal people. And when I first got involved with them, they, they were big fans of the show, and they said, we love Dr. Lynch. And I said, oh, you know of Dr. Lynch. They're like, yep, love him. And I said, is he ever right? And they kind of smiled and looked at each other, and they said, uh, yeah, but he's wrong enough that it helps us out. <laughs> and I thought, okay. But they admitted that he's right sometimes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we can't all be right 100% of the time, but that's also one of the ploys that they use, like the Flat Earth Society, is we'll take just a little bit of truth, and then we'll cover it in just crazy-sounding things that makes everybody just turn away from that little nugget of truth. Yeah. So there's just really no way to, without sifting through all of it and having to use discernment and logical thinking at the information you're presented, then you're just left with just taking whatever the government says. So before you, before you ask your mm -hmm. question, mm -hmm. do you think that you personally have a thumb on the side of the scale for the conspiracy at all or do you simply go into every situation whether it's jfk or it's it's uh, uh food sources or it's uh the moon landing and say i'm gonna go where the evidence takes me no matter what i try to go where the evidence takes me no matter what but that's just i mean kind of but you also have a healthy skepticism of the government so if well, the government yeah. told us stuff you might be justified in saying I'm going to take this with a grain well, of salt. Well, that's just it. When you're taking the word of known liars, you have to kind of question wh why you're doing that. So when the government tells you something, your first reaction should just be, okay, well, thanks for providing that information, but now let's take a closer look and yeah. see what's really going on. Are there real sources out there, or does the government have their hands in all the different... Because that would be brilliant if the government even set up one of the better-known conspiracy theorist mm. people and said, you're our guy. I'm, I'm sure they've done that for a, a long time because every big major conspiracy guy that's out there that's crying or yelling and screaming or whatever it is they do nowadays, the, again, it's that same little morsel of truth surrounded yeah. by kind of crazy fear porn that just makes everybody want to... right. Turn the station Hashtag or go. Hashtag fear porn. Yeah, that's like nice. A, jump in a hole. <laughs> Check that out. So um, I know that we have other things that we're going to talk about with you uh, besides Flat Earth, but that's what made you famous. That's sure. what brought you <laughs> famous. That's what brought you to us. Um, and because of this story that's in the news, it, it sort of, it sort of uh, has to do with the whole Flat Earth um, belief. Sure. Uh, astronaut Scott Kelly mm -hmm. has been in the, has been in the uh, news a lot. He has spent a year, you know, the story is, he has spent a year at, at the um, International Space Station. He, of course, has his twin brother, who's also an astronaut here on Earth, and now they're doing all these tests to compare the two identical twins to see the effects of space. Is that, I can't remember where you stand on International Space Station and all that. Is that completely fabricated, or is there... See, that's a close one, because it's yeah. really not even in space. I mean, it's near Earth orbit, so the International Space Station, they're not even in space. The farthest you've ever but been in space is the But there's something up in the sky. There's 
there's a base in the sky? Well, what we can do is we can take a telescope and see something in the sky, and they can show us pictures on our television that say this is from inside what you see of your telescope. There's just never really any correlation between the two. We've never seen things that would necessarily So what, you, what are your up. thoughts on that story? Do you think it's... Do you um, think there's truth in there, or do you think it's a, completely fabricated? British astronaut Tim Peake was the first British astronaut to ever go in space, just went up. Um, so he's been up there for a little while. And I just showed a little thing on the, I saw it on the Internet somewhere, of Secret Service pushing the first George Herbert Walker Bush through the ISS uh, command station. And there's everybody sitting at their desk and their consoles and big screens on the back. And in the back, you can see a picture of Tim Peake sitting behind one of these chroma key blue screens gridded off for the motion capture computers software. And you can see him there with this little green ball floating around his hand. And you can see them faking this ISS footage of him playing with water and drinking water on the ISS. So they're kind of showing you how they're faking it. You can see... Any of the Scott brothers hanging from harnesses, their strange arm positions when they're talking on camera, just the way they have to hold themselves to keep from swaying on the harness. It's really... I know this Could is there a, be something up there? Sure, but it, it doesn't look like it from the footage they show us. I know this is a like cliche it. question, but how could that many people keep the yeah. secret? Or have they? Have there been people who come out and say, and then they disappear quickly? Like, like astronauts. Right. Okay. Uh, well, there have been astronauts. There's been, there was one astronaut shooting. His name just slips my mind. Um who actually hung a lemon from the shuttle because he knew that this, everything was kind of this far. So well, I, why he did it, I don't know. But he hung the lemon, shuttle blows up, he dies. Gus Grissom was his name. Hmm. Gus Grissom was one that the shuttle just unexpectedly exploded and killed him. Not like the Challenger where it didn't kill anybody and all those astronauts are still alive today. Go but, back up on that one. Yeah. Which oh, one was the Challenger? Was that the one with 80, the teacher? 85. 85 yeah, that teacher. was yeah. Yeah. So they weren't on it when it blew up? You can... There was actually a flat earther that went back and researched the Challenger flight and found like seven of the eight or six of the seven, all but one of them, found, again, twin brothers. Two of them had twins, apparently. So there's a really so high number of astronauts answer. that are twins, but yet all of a sudden now there's a twin of the astronaut that died on the Challenger. Now there's a twin of this person. Some are still using their same name. Okay, know. so the, there's sh shuttles that take off and go up in the sky. Mm -hmm. That's... Well, they go up. That's clear, right? Yes. That's visible, and people are there watching these vehicles go up into the air. Uh -huh. What are they? Where are they going? Is that just well, if you watch, a show? they hit a parabolic arc. Even when the shuttle takes off, it doesn't go straight up to space. It goes off in a curve, and they say, well, of course, this is to reach um, enough speed to break through the atmosphere so they can get out. But the longer you watch it, the more you can kind of see that parabolic arc start to come down. And, of course, the video NASA provides, they'll never show the whole thing. They use cut scenes, and they'll go to CGI animation. So you'll never see it. You've never seen an actual shuttle take off and reach that magic point and just start floating and then burst off into space. Mm -hmm. There's just no footage of it. It's all edited together to show something else. So it just gets up high enough and then starts to go across the sky. It's funny. You just think somewhere. they're launching from the Florida. The ocean or something. Shooting them east, you'd think there maybe there's an area out there in the middle of the ocean where they don't like people going between Bermuda and like Florida and a little triangle section through there. You might not want a lot of people going. <laughs> That'd be a good reason why. You're I just see. Launching rockets I out that see. way. Has being a conspiracy theorist on social media now on the radio, <clears throat> and of course, you know, before you met us, you were uh, this way. Of course, has it affected your life negatively at all with jobs or relationships? I mean, is there the stigma of you're just a cuckoo? Um, there is some of that. I do spend a lot of time, you know, being quiet. I uh, ah, to myself ah. a lot because you can't just kind of blur it out there with all this stuff going on in your head. So did you did you get in? Did you make a decision to become to to follow these conspiracy theories, or is it just well, in the, investigative uh, intuition? Like, well, I want to make sure that that's true, and you looked into it, and then it, it was just, kind of the breaking of that programming. One of the things I did when I eventually get into was compulsory public education and once you can break that conditioning that they instill in you in public education and learn to look at things with a completely different point of view than what you're what you're being taught where it's not scanning the things just to find the answers to the 
to answer the questions. You're actually looking for information and you're weighing the information and you're using discernment to let's, figure out what's Let's do that now. It's a great place to start. <clears throat> we, we all, I went through public school education and I know, and I'm, I know what you're talking about where it's so formatted that here's your social studies book and you figure out and you feel like you're a genius because you figure out, wait a second, all the answers are in the next five pages I'm just going to go through. Ulysses S. Grant, circle it, boom, number B, gone, and you move on. You think that that's very much on purpose to give us the the knowledge base that we have and teach us the way of thinking that we have so that we can then become good little matrix type consumers i'm 100 percent convinced of that only because i went back and looked at where the public schools came from and the guys that instilled it and the model that they used for the american public school system which was the prussian system they needed better soldiers prussia was a basically they rented out their army and when their professional soldiers got beat by napoleon's basically militia, they decided they need to figure out how to get better soldiers. So they decided they need to start training them young. So that they get them young, you give them eight years, and you teach them to either be a good worker, to be a good worker for the state, or a good industrialist, or a good worker for the state, or to be a good soldier. Those are the three things. You got them on a regimen, you teach them like Pavlov. They react to the bell, they go, they learn to respect authority. So they don't answer questions, they don't ask questions, they just do what they're told, they regurgitate whatever information they're told to regurgitate, and that's what they're rewarded for. That's how you get through school, is basic regurgitation. Got, a couple, got a couple of good questions here on Twitter. Um, at Tony Colombo 971, at Max on Movies, if you want to follow or ask along on Twitter. Uh, why, this is the Mark Close question, why would multiple governments collude on the space station conspiracy? And somebody wants me to ask you, and we got a lot of this last time you were here and never got to this question, about the famous Red Bull skydiver that was apparently Felix. right at the edge of space. Yeah, and you could, Felix. You, you could see the curvature of the Earth. So sure. why would the governments all collude on a space station conspiracy? What's the point? And then Red Bull. Well, we've had our space program since 68, I think, was when they started it, something like that. I know this year their budget was $19 billion. And if you're throwing up fake rockets to crash into the ocean and CGI footage of an ISS, it doesn't really cost all that much. So you take $19 billion and you pocket $17 billion and you take the $2 billion that's left to fake a space program. I mean, there's a pretty a good incentive for lots of countries to say, you know what, we're going to go to space too. So that's fake a space program. Red Bull? Red Bull, Felix Baumgartner. That's a good one. There's a, he used several cameras. There was a camera actually inside his balloon and several cameras outside. The cameras outside were obviously fish islands because as the balloon sways, you can see it morph. Because you see the nice, perfect curvature of the Earth, just like everybody says. There's Felix Baumgartner and the curvature of the Earth. Balloon moves, and okay, well, now the Earth is convex. Now it's concave. Now it's flat. Now it's convex. Now it's flat. Now it's concave. Okay, well, what is it? It's a fisheye lens. Congratulations, Felix. You are jumping out of onto a flat Earth plane. Uh, right back, more Paranormal Tuesday with conspiracy theorist Josh Corey. Your questions and comments, 969-9797. Thirty on the dot. Dave Glover Show, Paranormal Tuesday. Josh Corey, conspiracy theorist, always a popular guest. Uh, phones are going crazy. Some people calling to say that Gus Grissom didn't die in the, the shuttle. He died in the Apollo mission uh, when fire swept through the capsule when it was still uh, on the ground. Um, and then he just blew us away with the dumbest thing ever: mm. the Berenstein Bears. So just walk through it with the people out there in their car. Yeah, sure. Because um, I remember as a kid. Um, having these books, I, I was my parents really encouraged reading, so we had lots of books. And I remember uh, books about a family of bears with a mama bear and the papa bear and the two little bears and the baby bear. And it was the Berenstein Bears or the Berenstein Bears. I, yep. And really I remember kinda... them because my son had them, and I felt like they were somewhat racist mm -hmm. because, like, a Jewish bear family. And how did you? Right. Yeah, because you thought I, it was. I uh, thought it was Berenstein or Berenstein. No doubt, no with doubt e. in my mind. It's with an E. What about yes. you, Mark? Do you remember them? Did oh, you, absolutely, you yeah. Same thing. Berenstein, Berenstein Bears. Bears. Yeah. Yeah. Berenstein That's what Bears. I would remember. Yeah. Guess what? Nope. Yeah. I never even looked at this until just now. So it's spelled 
Stain. Stain, as it S-T-A-I-N. turns out. S-T-A-I-N. It has never had an E in the name. It has always had an E. you think that that is... And, and the internet thinks that it's wow. evidence of parallel universes. That's different timelines. Uh, something, something is what they say. We all have this shared memory of something that apparently never existed. And why would that be? Why would we? It, it, so at some point it was Berenstein, and then we all went into a different mm-hmm. timeline. Sure enough, um, I don't know. <clears throat> so we went into a timeline where it was Berenstein because okay, tell me if I'm wrong. My understanding of, of parallel universes is that there's an infinite number of universes and there's an infinite number of Dave Glovers and one of them is exactly like me except for he has a wart on his nose. But everything else is exactly the same. There's an infinite number so that whatever happens, everything has to happen yeah. for one thing to be possible. So we're living in the Berenstein Bears and then whoop, we fall into the Berenstein Bears timeline but we belong in the Steen timeline timeline, but we all remember it the same way. Well, I mean, parallel applies at least two, so it could be an infinite number or at least another one, at least one more running parallel. Um, the speculation is it might have had something to do with CERN and what's going on with their particle accelerator over there and some of the wow. crazy Shiva dance rituals that they're doing over at CERN, which just gets so they popped scary. us into another timeline. It could be. I mean, it could be, but we're all just misremembering and it. And what's the Mandela the Mandela, what's well, called the Mandela effect, is what it's based off of, and this was the idea of these two ladies at a conference, just sitting down to have a conversation. And one was mentioning about how she remembered Nelson Mandela having died in prison. And the lady says, "No, Nelson Mandela just died a few years ago." And then was had this little argument about when it was that Nelson Mandela died, and so they kind of got others included on their conversation, and it was split down the side. So the, half of them remembered him dying in prison; the other half remembered him dying outside of prison, a free man. And so it's been kind of called this Mandela effect, the idea that there are people with two different memories of the same event. Which, of course, it could have been that he died a few years ago and some people were just wrong, thought he died in oh, prison. Sure. And they have all those could hopes be all that the, the Berenstein Bears have always been spelled AI and we just all remember it wrong. But that's weird. It is weird. And I fully it's accept weird. that. There's lots of examples of this and Mandela it, effect that they use. And it's quite possible that many of them are just com- mass misrememberings. You did a great job of setting it up, too, and so I would encourage people that are listening to to do the same thing because you started the story, you said, hey, does anybody remember these books about these family of bears? And so all of us in the room went, Berenstein Bears! Yeah. Because he wanted to prove that we would all say the same thing. I'm tweeting the link to that one article. And there, yeah, so okay, right. I was about to do the same I'm thing. I'll, right here. You do it, I'll retweet you. Yeah, so go to Twitter and you can... And you, and, and you know what? There's <laughs> There's... The one article that Max is sending, but there's, spend some time, there's, Google it, there's a whole bunch of different articles dedicated to it. Also on Twitter, at Tony Coloma 971 or at Max on Movies, somebody wants to know if it's, if, if all these conspiracy theories are happening, who's behind it all? Who, they, they, and then they list Illuminati, reptilians, aliens, masons, Elks Lodge. Do, do you have a theory on who is behind it all? Those all sound like probably arms of the same entity. I mean, we can keep it very practical or kind of go esoteric and get with the spiritual aspect of whether it's just psychopaths or whether there's an evil kind of force entity that's controlling them, that's creating psychopaths and these false psychopaths out of society. I'm not quite sure who it ultimately is, but there are fingerprints of all those people, the Illuminati, the Bilderberg Group, the CFR. I mean, we can go on and on and on about the fingerprints that are out there. I mean, we can show where they're being used where where they're taking credit you're saying they all are working together they could well, probably not probably there. not together chances are there's at least two factions i would say probably both working towards how high do you think you can <clears throat> climb in the in the united states government without knowing that this is going on how how high can you be a a, you, a useful idiot well it's kind of like independence day where the, even the president has to have that plausible deniability so everybody in a sense is compartmentalized and in their own way a useful idiot because nobody has that full picture they all given the idea that they have a full picture how many people do you think do uh, that actually have that the really know full that, picture yeah, that know it all chances are that know it all probably nobody the ones with the best picture are probably people we have never heard of right and everybody else, the Rothschilds and everybody else are just names that are put out there to make sure that we don't know the real name. Another person wants to know, uh, if our planet is flat, why would we be the only planet that's flat? This person says a decent telescope can see round planets in the solar system. I mean, that does make sense. So when we look at all the planets in the telescope, are they all flourishing with life with a great atmosphere like Earth does? 
If not, then why does Earth? I mean, Earth is obviously different than everything else. We are obviously special. I think this is one of the reasons that they are promoting the heliocentric model is because it hides a relationship and a closeness with a creator. And that's why they want to push this kind of a sun-worshipping heliocentric model. So you think that there is a creator and they're trying to hide that or the opposite? I personally think there is a creator, and I personally think that there are forces that want to hide who that creator is, yes. How much that's tied into whether the Earth is flat or round, I'm not do really sure. Do you think sure, that but... the mainstream religions are a way of hiding the true creator, or do you think that one of them have it right? I don't think any of them have them right. Again, I think it's having to use that discernment and that rational thought and being able to take all the information in. I think all of them have a lot of truth in them. And Christianity, if you take it on a very literal basis, is undeniably a flat earth book. You can't pull the shape of the earth out of the Bible and say, okay, now it's round, because it's just not there. It's fixed. It's immovable. It's plain. Because a lot of people will criticize the Bible by saying it got the science all wrong. And I think that's kind of part of the reason, part of that fight. We can talk about who's controlling it's the Jesuits and the way they're controlling the science and the religion and putting, you know, controlling the story, controlling the narrative of what science is and what religion is. And so it's all kind of working in tandem as, yes, we are heliocentric and yes, it is round and it's all God's great random happenstance and we're all living here. But I think it's considerably more personal than that with Do us and the creator. Do you theory who the creator is? None, none whatsoever because it would be so far outside my realm of comprehension that it would be probably my head would explode if I were <laughs> to see it. We're getting lots of calls and lots of tweets of going back to the Gus Grissom point that you made about hanging the lemon and did i misspeak uh are they no, correcting me i well they are but i mean i just no, I, looked I, I just wrong. looked for the astronaut that hung the lemon and it is gus grissom but these are all conspiracy theory websites <laughs> sure so, I mean, who are we? Who are we? <laughs> so you know is it, yeah right josh where do people find you on uh, online um you can find me on facebook joshua ryan Corey. that's about the only place i am i don't i'm not promoting anything i'm not pushing anything hawking anything just here you should <laughs> <laughs>